Good evening everybody, welcome back to my channel and continuing on with my with my review series of the Evil Dead franchise uh, I'm finally at uh, Evil Dead 2013 uh, It's like I said in my last review, this is one of my favorite installments in the franchise uh, I believe this was actually the second film that I watched and coincidentally enough at the time of uh, me recording uh, this, uh, it's actually the 10 year anniversary of uh, the 2013 film. Um, but I, I remember talking about this with my friends like way back in middle school. And we were all talking about like how scary it actually looked. And like this was before I like really, really got into horror films. Cause like I was seeing ads of, um, of like the possessed uh, me on YouTube rising up from the cellar saying like don't skip the ad don't skip the ad that kind of stuff and i'll be honest it actually freaked me out a bit uh but again this was before i started watching more and more horror films like the rest of the evil dead series nightmare on elm street friday the 13th even the exorcist so i honestly thought that this uh, was pretty scary especially when i actually watched uh, the film and yeah it was um and it still is one of uh, the scarier films that I've watched. And I think that does have to do with just how the Deadites uh, look in this film. Uh, so, like, just diving right into it, uh, just the stuff that I really liked about this film. Like, I mean, honestly, I gotta mention the opening uh, sequence where it shows, like, all of these, uh, which, uh, what basically looks like um, a cult at first of people who are gonna sacrifice this little girl. And as the, and as like the minutes tick by, like you realize that something's wrong and it's soon revealed that the little girl is actually a deadite. And like the cult is actually like this small uh, townsfolk who are trying to purge like the demon out of her. Which I believe I heard a theory that, um, that the reason uh, that like originally, uh, that originally like the ritual or whatever to purge the evil spirit didn't actually work because the little girl's father um like he, he burned uh, her body like what it said in the book but it uh, it didn't actually free her because then he blew her head off uh, with a shotgun so i think that's a working uh, theory on like why on why the on why the demon was still roaming free and why it still gets summoned the uh, but right after the opening like the story picks up like how basically how the original did where like five friends come to like this um come to this isolated cabin uh this time is actually yeah, for a different reason though because the main character uh mia who's played by jane levy i think her name is um uh, she's a drug addict, and they're trying to help her through detox. So they're going to an isolated uh, cabin to get her away from like everything and everyone. It kind of picks up uh, just like uh, where the original uh, did. Like someone reads uh, from the book, the demon comes in, possesses one of the characters, uh, and then like one by one they all get taken, just like how, <laughs> just like how uh, they said it in the original film, which. By the way, I actually did not pick this up until I recently rewatched on the film. But uh, the original actress who played Ash's sister Cheryl, I want to say her name was Ellen Sandwine. Not sure if I'm butchering the name, but uh, she actually uh, makes a voice cameo in uh, the film where she repeats uh, her line from the first movie going like, one by one we will take you like that kind of thing like and that's and that was awesome and that actually made me kind of believe that um that the remake actually takes place in the same continuity as the original films or at the very least in an alternate timeline which i'll get more into that in a minute but that was still awesome that one of the original actresses from the first film came back to do that even if it was just for a minimal role like that. Um, the, uh, the other uh, actors, like I actually don't recognize, except for, um, uh, except for, 
I can't even remember her name, so I'm just going to call her Tabitha, because uh, I remember her playing uh, Tabitha Galvan from Gotham Season 2, and this was before she went on to, uh, to star in that show. But literally her and Jane Levy are the only actresses that I recognized uh, from the movie. But either way, they all do great. Mia's uh, brother, David, uh, who I actually almost called Ash here, uh, he does great as like a contrast to, to basically the main character that we followed throughout uh, the whole movie, which I'll get more into that in a minute. Going off from the acting to the actual like, uh, to the actual scares of the film, like again, this is one of the scarier uh, films that I've seen, like ever. Period. It's easily the scariest of uh, the franchise so far, at least until we see Evil Dead Rise. Just the way that everything was like shot and scored, and like the way they played with the lighting, like there's some scenes that uh, that actually make uh, your skin crawl, like especially the scenes where they actually show like the where they show like the people getting possessed by dead uh, by the deadites where like uh, their bodies are all mangled and torn up like um, the, again the actress who plays Tabitha Galvan like her face uh, like, she cuts up her face once she's uh, possessed uh, in like this really grotesque uh, scene uh, David's girlfriend I believe her name is Natalie like she uh, she first cuts off her arm in a, in a way that's even like more gnarly and disturbing than like than Ash cutting off his hand in Evil Dead 2 like you actually see the like the arm just twitching and rotting away until she finally takes like an electric carver through it, uh, to it. it it was it was like some really hardcore stuff like even even Mia when she's possessed like uh, she licks this utility yeah, knife that splits her tongue and it was just, yeah, it, it actually made my skin crawl. And not, uh, not a lot of movies, not even horror movies, can make me do that. Um, the book itself is pretty cool. I mean, like, I haven't mentioned uh, the book much in these interviews, but uh, the usual MO of uh, the Necronomicon, which I believe is called the Natorum de Monto this time around, uh, the Necronomicon usually has like a face on the cover like because it's uh, wrapped in flesh and written in blood, right? Uh, this time it doesn't have a face but it is like stitched together and the the pages like the interesting thing about uh, the the writings in the book this time is they actually catalog the events of the film like uh, it basically goes through these different stages where like it starts with possession, which happens with them uh, getting possessed. Then um, then the possessed like starts boiling, uh, starts scalding herself with boiling hot water, which is what Mia does in a shower that starts to scald her skin. Uh, then it goes to like a person cutting their face off. Again, Tabitha Galvan. Uh, and then like from there it just keeps on going all the way up till the end where the where like the main demon who replacing the Kandarian demon this time around is the taker of souls uh he summons the uh the abomination who is basically like Mia's doppelganger in this film uh and the final uh, the f uh, the final climactic scene is honestly one of the coolest scenes I've seen in a horror film where the sky is just raining blood uh, the abomination rises up uh, from hell uh, and like there's like a not particularly like drawn out fight but like it is a little bit long where Mia's trying to escape until like she eventually kind of decides to fight back by using a machete and then a chainsaw but the whole kind of scene is just balls to the wall just great overall this film was uh, great it's definitely the scariest in the franchise that has been released um i and i honestly do wish that they actually made a sequel to it um but i heard that plans uh, were scrapped uh, for that once the director fide alvarez uh decided to instead make the don't breathe movies um and then 
Uh, and then Sam Raimi decided to make the TV show Ash vs. Evil Dead, which I will be covering over the next uh, few days, and I'll be going uh, through it season by season. But to wrap up uh, this film, great horror movie. Uh, honestly, at this point, like between Army of Darkness and Evil Dead, like I'm, I'm either gonna have to flip a coin, or like just close my eyes and 